What's up guys, you're welcome to Emacom TV where we publish news and politics, entertainment, celebrities and metro stories. We have another trending news for you today and the headline reads, Namdekanu makes strong allegation against Vice President Osibanjo. Alright guys, before I proceed with today's news, please if this is the first time you are watching any of our videos on our channel, there's a red subscribe button below this video now. Just go ahead, hit that red subscribe button, click the bell icon beside it to remain updated whenever we publish news like this without you ever missing any news again. Alright, now the news in details. The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdekano, has alleged that the Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Osibanjo is working against his diplomatic mission for the restoration of Biafra. Niger News report that the IPOP leader made this allegation in his recent live broadcast on Radio Biafra. Kanu alleged that the Nigerian Vice President offered to pay a consultancy firm working for IPOP for the restoration of Biafra the sum of $2 million monthly to hold their services. This, Namdekano said, happened less than 24 hours after his meeting with some diplomats in Washington, D.C., the United States of America. Niger News recalled that Namdekano met some diplomats in the United States where he discussed the actualization for the Republic of Biafra. Speaking on the meeting and what happened after it, Kano who refused to mention the consultancy firm working for IPOP accused Osibanjo of trying to induce the firm to dump their contract with IPOP. Kano said Vice President Yemi Osibanjo moved to bribe consultancy firm working for IPOP for the restoration of Biafra. Yemi Osibanjo promised to pay them two million dollars a month to stop working for IPOP, the IPOP leader alleged. All right, guys, this is a word Namdi Kano just uh, said. Um, for those of you who are actually on the know, who know what is actually happening, you discover that IPOP have really gone global. And um, the, global, the global stature of IPOP you get is actually giving some people a cause for concern. So now the Kanu here is alleging that the vice president is one of those or the cabal are actually fronting him or maybe it could be his own personal interest. Or I don't know, maybe to please some individual. So according to Nam the Kanu, Nam the Kanu said Osibanjo offered a particular firm he is working directly with. He said this firm renders services to IPOP in the United States. So Nam Dekano said that in the intelligence he got is that Osibanjo was able to infiltrate and know the firm and is paying that firm. Is is going to be paying or promised to pay that firm two million dollars for them to dump their contract with Nam Dekano and IPOP. You see, so but the question here is that if this is actually true. You get because now the canoe do not just come out to say anything uh, so careless like that. What these guys said always um, has a level of truth. In fact, he has truth. Let me not just say level of truth. You understand me? What now the canoe says is truth. For instance, during the election, nobody even anticipated or even knew that a ticket over car, you understand me, is a Cameroonian by bet. We never even knew that. And you know that according to the Nigerian constitution, if you are not a Nigerian by birth, you are not a Nigerian. You are not a citizen of Nigeria. But now the kind of story that Atiku is a citizen by choice. is a Nigerian citizen by choice, but not by birth. So, but I don't want to go, I don't want to delve into all of that one. But what I'm stating here is that now the kind of words should not be uh, just thrown away. So he has come out to allege that Osibanjo is trying to infiltrate to bribe this firm. How was he able to know? It could be it could be this firm have contacted him and tried to stop their services with him. I don't know. But the problem, the, the issue here is that why are some people um so jittery? You get about this Nam the Kano and about Radio Biafra. This Radio Biafra is not even in Nigeria. It's not hosted in Nigeria. It's hosted in another country. 
you get so and it was because of this radio brad Franam the canon was running from britain that made him to be arrested 2015 and once he came into nigeria he was arrested for charges of treason that was what it was the same treason that they 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 the level against uh, Oshawara now was what the level against Namdekano. Namdekano was only lucky to actually flee out of Nigeria. Otherwise, what they would have done, they would have killed this guy. You get? They would have killed him because the stringent bail condition they gave to him first was not favorable to him. Is the is the worst stringent bail condition that have been given to anybody in the history of Nigeria. In fact, I can remember Mina, Mina who stole how many billion? Was it two billion naira and fled the country? Do you know how much uh, bail, the bail condition given to him was only two million naira by a judge? You see, okay, what about Fire Shea of, of uh, this thing, of Ekiti State? When he appeared before EFC was taken to court and he was granted bail, how much did the, did the, did the, did the court grant him? Only 15 million naira. And they granted him on self recognition. No shorty. He didn't bring any shorty, just the 50 million naira and on self recognition. That is how this country is. This country don't want anybody that will actually uh, speak the truth or actually uh, uh, seek for a better country. That is Nigeria for you. Show I came out, I wanted to um, make Nigeria better. And to look at him, it's as if his, his efforts. You get has been spitted on. You get nobody. Look at all the old pastors. They have a lot of pastors in the southwest. Why are none of them talking? What about the boy? What about uh, uh, Osibanjo? What about Oyedepo? None of them. None of them. We have more prominent pastors in Nigeria from southwest more than any other ethnic group in Nigeria. They are more and they are very prominent. Look at the likes of. Uh, none of them have spoken but they forget this this Oshawara is their own child you get so that aside what I'm trying to stress here is that now the canoe is alleging that these guys are trying to fight them abroad remember I think of the was that was it an uh, April sorry not April August August and um, between August and September, Namdi Kano had delivered speech at both the U U European Union Parliament and the United Nations at at um at Switzerland. You understand me? He has delivered speech. He has addressed the United Nations office in Switzerland. So I think um some people are not actually happy about this. You get. Uh, the federal government may not be happy about this okay and so so they would they may be that they may go extra mile to try to shut down namdi kano from abroad and they may want to use the instrument of money you know this country has more money than than any other country you get to just use carelessly that is why you see if actually this allegation is true that's why you see the vice president can easily dole out two million naira i mean to just for a particular firm to shut down iPod radio station. Forgetting that if a particular firm is shut down, you can go to another firm again. What if now they can switch switches to another firm again to actually host his radio station on that firm? What happens? So you will go again and pay that firm another $2 million to have it shut down. This is just insane, man. It is just insane. So what do you guys think? Do you think that Osibanjo have been in the eye of the storm? You get of recent this guy has been in a very serious uh, mess do you think that he could be lobbying to shut down ipop abroad because you see this radio station it is this ipop radio station that now they can use to unite the entire ipop world together that is the only radio station it does and i think it is the same radio station that the federal government wanted to host for uh the fulani headsmen you wanted to actually set it up for them you get so people actually protested and said uh -uh, why did you want to set up a radio station for this uh Bietiala people meanwhile other ethnic group are there why favor only one ethnic group than the other you know why because there is power in communication there is a power in ability to reach out to millions of people and you know that i pop in diaspora According to estimation, they are up to 9 million members. You get that's why they refer to themselves as one family. You get the IPO family is the big 
family. So IPOP in diaspora is 9 million. I don't even think of IPOP within Nigeria. IPOP within Nigeria could be more than, could be more than up to even uh, uh, 40 million. They could be more than 40 million. You get so uh, that is that. So I don't know what do you guys think about it. Do you think this allegation against um, Osibanjo is actually true, especially seeing that he has just been in the eye of the storm of recently? What do you guys think about this? I want to drop your comment below. Let me know what you think.